Hi, I'm Pedro de Costa, Editorial Fellow here at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. I'm joined by Jacob Kierkegaard. Thank you so much. And we're here to talk about the uh, never-ending story of uh, the migration crisis in Europe, which seems to be getting worse by the day. So, Jacob, you were skeptical of this uh, deal with Turkey to begin with. Uh, and now that it's been implemented, it doesn't seem to be working out very well. It kind of seems to be playing in the direction that you predicted it would. Can you tell us exactly what the deal involves and why you called it illusory from, from the get-go? Yeah, I mean, the problem is that this is a deal that, in my opinion, will never be implemented. In fact, it's just a piece of paper. Uh, and what has been agreed is, is, is several things. But the sort of big issue items is that the Europeans have agreed to establish what you can refer to as a sort of rapid uh, asylum processing system in Greece so that as of March 20th or, or the last weekend, everyone that arrives in Greece uh, is put through, in principle, a rapid individualized process of having their asylum application uh, uh, looked at and then under the assumption that they do not qualify for asylum in the European Union, they are then uh, immediately returned uh, back to Turkey. Now, how quickly is that process going to actually take place? Well, in, in principle, the idea is that, it should, that returns should start after two weeks, meaning April 4th. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the problem is that this assumes that Greece has a functioning uh, asylum system and it also assumes that Turkey is a safe country with which you can return uh, uh, refugees and neither is true. Uh, so the reality is that uh, uh, if we assume and the, late, the earliest data suggests that people are still coming to Greece uh, in the first 24 hours about 1700 arrived. Uh, uh, these people are going to be uh, stuck in Greece, in mm -hmm. my opinion, because it will take much longer for them to be processed. And uh, it's not even clear that at least the non-Syrians among them can be sent back to Turkey, because in Turkey, the non-Syrians don't have refugee status. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to end up with a situation where Greece uh, is already turning uh, processing centers into what the deal calls closed detention centers, mm -hmm. uh, which is what in normal parlor is called prisons. Yeah. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why the UN Refugee Agency has disavowed itself of these camps, right? Yeah. I mean, these, these are closed camps. Uh, they're prisons. Yeah. And they're going to be built uh, or, or converted, uh, established on a number of Greek islands paid for by the European Union. Yeah. Uh, uh, but this is what I have earlier called essentially the Australian approach to illegal migration. Because yeah. uh, obviously Australia is a country that for many years, and very controversially, has taken the illegal migrants that come to Australia, uh, you know, via boat from Indone through Indonesia and, and elsewhere, and, and processed them in camps on you know far off small islands mm -hmm. and this is where Europe is heading and now of course Europe isn't acknowledging that it's doing this and this it would be a very controversial approach but you even as ugly as this might sound you actually seem to think that this isn't actually one of the best things they can do given the rather ugly alternative so what what could happen if if, if it, this is I mean the I, I think the, the the one positive from this is that at least these closed detention centers as they call them these prisons uh, it will all be paid for by the European Union so at least Europe is is acknowledging that we got to foot the bill for what is a European problem mm -hmm. so you're not in fact uh, leaving uh, this to be only on the shoulders of the Greek uh, government, which is of course always is already in many ways a bankrupt government, and you you should you could expect generally speaking that the situation conditions in even these closed facilities will be better than on the camps at Adinomini on the Macedonian Greek border, which is essentially a mud pit. Yeah. You know, because the other reality of this deal uh, is that the border between Greece and Macedonia and in the, in the entire uh, border north uh, of Greece will remain closed. Yeah. And that is ultimately what's going to slow very significantly the inflow of refugees to the rest of Europe. Now, you also um, mentioned when we last spoke that Greece might use this as an opportunity potentially for 
you know, for some of the debt relief that it had been seeking uh, in previous well, I times. mean, I, I think if the Greek government, I think the Greek government should view this as admittedly a rather, you know, in, it's an opportunity for them, in my opinion, in, in cynical political terms. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't see, it seems to me to be pretty obvious that given that this is going to happen, yeah. uh, uh, in my opinion, the Greek government should say to the rest of the European Union, look, okay, we will host these uh, detention facilities in Greece and thereby solve a very large political problem or help solve a very large political problem for the rest of Europe. But you, the rest of Europe, should not only pay for the uh, upkeep of these facilities, which they are, mm -hmm. uh, uh, according to this deal, but you know you should also pay us some income, pay us some rent. Yeah. And the easiest way to do that is to basically cut, give us a better deal on debt relief. Yeah. Uh, I think that is an entirely fair, uh, uh, appropriate, uh, if somewhat cynical, uh, uh, measure to take from, uh, from this. Sounds like an interesting proposal, and we'll um, see what the Troika will say. We'll see what the Troika says, but I mean, this is actually not even the Troika. This is in, this is only uh, the Euro area. Yeah. Uh, uh, the IMF uh, has nothing to do with this. Yeah. This is something that is, uh, in fact, the IMF would welcome yeah. more debt relief uh, given by the by the Euro area to Greece, probably without asking too much about why the wh how the politics that brought it about <laughs> came to be. Indeed. But but there is another element to what was agreed, which is is often misunderstood. Stood, which is the 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 sort of uh, uh, assumption that there is now a new quota under this deal that says that the deal is off when seventy two thousand uh, migrants, uh, if seventy two thousand migrants come from Turkey to Greece, that mm -hmm. is the maximum number that uh, the Europeans are willing to accept as part of the system because there is this concept of one to one. Right. Uh, and this is essentially, in principle, it's a good idea because you want to uh, essentially undermine the business model of people smugglers. Mm -hmm. So rather, so what the Europeans in principle have agreed to do is that for every migrant that is returned from Greece to Turkey, the European Union is going to accept one refugee or migrant directly from Turkey into uh, the rest, the, all of the EU. Mm -hmm. Um, the problem, however, with that is that there is no coercion involved in this. It's all voluntary, up to each individual member state uh, to say how many uh, would you like to take. I see. Uh, and we have uh, known for some time. In fact, when in in July two thousand June July two thousand fifteen, the European Union said we should we should take twenty thousand. Uh, people directly from uh, uh, the Syrian uh, theater and come to EU. And that, hasn't and happened that they've only taken 2,000. So the tragic coming outcome is that the first 18,000 of, of the 72,000 is actually those that haven't come under earlier commitments. So they're just recycling. Uh, that number yeah. in order to avoid imposing more and and they know politically unacceptable uh, demands by in the, on member states to accept more refugees and the same is true for the remaining fifty four thousand which comes from parts of those one hundred and sixty thousand mm -hmm. that were agreed last year to be relocated from Greece and Italy to the rest of the EU well only you know only a couple of I mean not even a thousand have have done that. So a lot of window dressing, it, a lot it's of complete number window recycling. dressing, and it's based on the assumption, which I believe is, is wishful thinking at best, that European member states will be more willing to take direct to take refugees directly from Turkey than from other member states in Greece and Italy. And I just don't think that's that's possible. Sure. So the only way in which this deal might survive is in fact if Angela Merkel says, fine, Germany will take all the 72,000 because I don't think anybody else is going to take more than a couple of hundreds. So, so Angela Merkel, uh, if she wants her deal to succeed, she's going to have to pay for it, but she's also going to have 
uh, uh, to take all the refugees. That's a and tall order given the political pressure she's under. At it's home. a tall order even even for her. So, so ultimately, uh, uh, this is a deal that doesn't solve the things that it claims to do. It, it's not, in my opinion, ever going to be genuinely implemented. And meanwhile, the barbed wire on the Macedonian border remains in place. And that, uh, as I said earlier, is actually what's going to solve a lot of the problems uh, and reduce at least this migratory route into Europe. Now, that may, may create others or reestablish others avenues into Europe, but this one uh, will remain closed. But it just has nothing to do with this deal. Jacob, thanks so much for your insights. My pleasure. Appreciate it.